Now we're going to replace the covers on our machine. We'll start with the rear cover first. So turn the machine around and we'll take our rear panel and we'll start to line it up. However, first make sure the presser foot lifter is always down. We don't want to crack it off and cause more work. So we'll line it up and we'll gently start to put it onto the rear of the machine. Making sure that everything is going to fit correctly and we'll work it around the presser foot lifter and we'll lift it up and down to make sure that the rear panel is not hitting or rubbing into it as it lifts up and down. Now we'll replace the really long screw that's on the top rear right hand side of the cover. And we're going to go to the left hand side of the machine and the handle's already up and we'll replace the screw that goes in. Next we have the screw that's on the left hand side that holds the rear panel to the casting and just tighten that screw. It was already there and all we did was loosen it before. Just the same as underneath the free arm we have the screw that holds the bottom of the rear cover to the bottom of the machine and just tighten that screw as well. Now we're going to take the cover that goes over the thread cutter and is our extension cover for our free arm. Now it will slide on nice and go right over our thread cutter. And there's only one screw that holds this in on the rear of the free arm. Now we'll take the machine, we'll turn it around and we're going to get it ready for the front panel. Now the front panel may be a little bit more difficult putting on because we have our A board in there and we have to make sure that we put every wire back in the correct spot. Now the good thing about the 350E when replacing the front panel or plugging the wires back into the A board that they are color coded and pin counted and we actually do have enough space here so it's not as tight as some other machines. As you can see here, we can get a nice view. And we're not peeking in between a crack between the front panel and the machine itself. So I always like to start with my bottom wires first. And we got the good old red, white, and blue. And we'll untangle the other wires to make it a little bit easier for ourselves. It's always important always to take your time when doing this. Usually, if you rush through it, maybe we can miss a wire or it's not plugged in all the way. And the trouble with that is we put everything back together, turn it on, and then we get upset because it's not working. So we'll always take our time and really study it and make sure that we check every single connection. See, we have a few more at the top, and we'll dig inside those wire groupings there. Yeah, sometimes the wires curl up and they go inside the machine, and believe it or not, sometimes they blend in looking like another wire that you think is already plugged in. Now we're getting a little bit tighter as we get closer to the top, and now it's going to be a little bit harder to see. But this one was a lot nicer and easier to use easier to change. If you want you can leave your motor plug unplugged right now. That's the nice thing about changing the motor on this too is that we don't usually have to take the front panel off to do it. We have complete access to the connection from the side or the right hand side of the machine. Now start to put the front panel on and we need to line up the metal plate at the top and our tab on the bottom and we're going to turn the machine around and we have to work the front cover underneath the tension unit 
and we'll start to push it together. Look underneath the free arm there and make sure that the tab is going to go behind the screw. And we can fit that in nicely. See, we're taking your time. We're making sure that we're not going to snap any of the tabs or clips off. And now that we got the front panel nicely connected onto the machine, no gaps between the front and the rear, we can start to tighten up the screws, starting on the right hand side at the top and now at the bottom. we have our thread guide with the screw and we'll start to get that together line it up nicely and slide it on and we'll hold that a little bit firm and we'll get the screw started and we're going to screw in all the way last but not least we have the screw underneath the free arm and we're just going to tighten that Now we're going to lay the machine down and we're going to attach the bed cover. There are two screws that hold a bed cover. Now on this one we don't have to worry about any switches on it to drop feed dogs because the 350E doesn't have it. It's a very simple machine to get into in service which is nice.